Greetings folks, Lance here. So what we're looking at here is my Outback Power monitoring software. This runs local and as you can see according to the shunt that I have in this system we're at a hundred percent state of charge. But if we go over to the BMS test software as it cycles through here there's a huge variance in the state of charge for each of the modules. Now, ignore address one. That's reserved for another project I'm working on. But as you can see, especially if we look at the multi-pack, so this is module one, no data there. But the state of charge, you know, the lowest is 72%, the highest is 100%. But we're not putting any more juice into these modules. But I think what, what I'm going to do is just go out and reset all of the modules and see if they actually get to 100%. Because right now, there's no more charging. In fact, uh, these are idle. Yeah, 80 84 percent idle nine they're just idle so they're not even trying to charge so let's go reset the modules so what we're going to do here is just take a little little something that's thin and in the reset button we're just going to press it in and hold it in for about five or six seconds there, the alarm light came on, so now we're going to release it. So now it's resetting. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that process on all six of these modules. So we're back at BMS Tools, and it doesn't look like resetting made any difference. So I think I'm going to go turn each of the modules off and then back on. So I'm just going to turn off the power to the module. And I'm going to leave it off for a couple of seconds here. And then turn it back on. And I'm just going to repeat that process for each of these modules. So I've actually been in the process of uh, troubleshooting this some more. And kind of ended up, ended up going off on a tangent. I don't know if I call it a tangent. Another rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> so right now well we just got some clouds but we're essentially at 100% state of charge but we're still having the same problem but on module 4 actually let's uh, let's do it this way just that way it doesn't rotate on us okay You'll notice module four here is at 100% now. And this is actually the module that was the absolute worst. <laughs> it, it was, until just a little bit ago, it was like at 72%. So how do we get it up to 100%? Well, actually, let me back up because I did something else that didn't fix the problem, but might be kind of important to know. I tried to do a firmware update, wondering if that might take care of it. So I went out to EG Electronics and I downloaded the most recent firmware version. And, and I'm not gonna go into the details on this. This is gonna be separate, but there's a problem that came up You'll notice here that the title says 313. However, when I did the update, it says 310. So I don't know if this is actually 310 or 313. Either way, that didn't fix the problem. I ended up going, going ahead and updating all my modules. Uh, I had 
swapped out one of the BMSs a little while back, and it actually had a newer firmware. So I thought, well, I probably need to get them all so that way they're the same. But that did not fix the problem. But I had a conversation with Jenna at, at uh, Signature Solar, and she suggested that I disconnect one, one of the modules, isolate it, and then use the EG4 48 volt charger to charge it. Now, how would this be different? Well, here's why it's different. Typically, you're going to have your charge settings to charge at 56.2 volts. And this is rated at 58.4. So it's almost like it's going to equalize the battery module. So in order to do that, uh, our next, what's our next lowest one here? So we're going to do address zero. That's our lowest one. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut off the power for address zero. And then we're going to disconnect the bus bar cables. Now, my bus bars are live. So, do not try this at home. <laughs> I'm going to disconnect these live. And then I'm going to, I'm going to slide these over, over the ends just to make sure that they don't uh, make contact somewhere. You may want to shut down your whole system. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these, and then I'm going to reconnect the charger. Now, the way the charger comes, I, I had to put an extension on here because it wasn't really wide enough to bridge that gap. You might be able to split the outer cable there to do that, but I just added an, added an extension. So again, just to reiterate, I'm going to take these cables off and put the charger cables on. I'm gonna protect these. Again, you may wanna turn off all your power, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so let's swap these out real quick. So I removed the cable going to the bus on each side and covered them in, in a little bit of uh, heat shrink just to protect them. Have the cables hooked up from the charger and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this camera up here to show the screen I have not plugged the charger in yet but the last time I did this it happened really quickly so pay attention you may even end up having to rewind the video a few times to see what actually happens watch the voltage level watch the alarms and protection status. Once I plug this in, you're gonna see a number of things happen fairly quickly here. Um, first of all, I actually have to turn on the power. So you'll see the state of charge come up. All right, 84 and a half percent. So now I am plugging the charger in. And you may hear the fan on the charger kick in here in a bit. There goes the fan. And then it goes to charging. Then you'll see the voltage creep up. The current will go in more and more. Voltage will creep up. And once the voltage gets to a certain point, It just went up over 57, 57 and a half, bam, 
we start getting errors and immediately it went to 100% state of charge. So, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. So what's happening? In a sense, we're doing like a like an equalization. We're forcing that voltage up. And oh, here's another thing we're going to do. So now you got all these errors here. All you have to do is come down and do a reset. Hold it in for about five or six seconds until you see the alarm light come on. Okay. And then these errors should go away. Ah, oh, they came back. <laughs> Probably didn't set long enough. Ah, oh, they're probably just a little high yet. Did I do the right one? Maybe I turned it off last time. Well, they probably haven't settled down enough yet. This power is off and back on. Power off. Okay. Back on. Okay, no errors. So that should take care of it. But I'm thinking here, the voltage needs to go up around 57 and 3 quarters. So, if I set my equalization parameters in the outback to, let's say, 58 volts, which is actually still lower than the 58.4 volts here, if I could get all my modules to reset without going through this whole process and disconnecting and setting up the charger and charging and disconnecting and reconnecting, could just running an equalization at 58 volts reset all these just quick and easy. Although I really think that they need to do something with their well, they may claim that since I'm attached to Outback Power and there's no communication between Outback and EG4, maybe there's an issue there. But I think that there's probably some tweaking that needs to be done with the BMS software for this to be managed properly. Maybe I need to up my charge settings a little bit. I don't know what the exact answer is, but this does seem to fix the problem if you've been having this problem um, this is the solution this is what has worked so far I do think there's a, a more ideal way of doing it so I'm going to try a little experiment here I just changed my equalizer setting on the Outback system to 58 volts so we're going to force it to do an EQ charge. You can see the equalized level set at 58 volts right here. We're going to tell it to start. Yes. So it just went into equalization mode. Now let's see what happens to the voltage. It did I don't think it goes up quite as fast as that little charger does, but it's rising pretty quick. All right, we're seeing the voltage rise. I'm being, let's see here, 100%, not, even, not getting any errors yet. Probably going to start getting some errors at this point right here. Yep. And it looks like we're at 100% on the 
on all of them now. So now I am going to just go back to bulk charge. We just had to do it long enough. Ooh, voltage is still high. So now it looks like I'm going to have to reset all these. But that's a much simpler process than <laughs> unhooking all those cables and hooking up the charger. But I think there are some problems with maybe the Outback settings. I was noticing when I go back in, it doesn't save the 56.2, but goes down to 56 volts. So it's dropping pretty quick, pretty quickly here. So now I'm not sure if this will go away by itself or if I have to reset them and turn them back off. But still, this is a whole lot easier than what I was doing before. But we're at 100% on each of them. We're going all the way through.